All right, welcome to Operation End Times. I'm your Jedi Warrior for Jesus, Bent Hellestead. Uh, you know, this is kind of like my new, my new digs. Uh, I didn't actually move as far as where I live, but in the place that I live, I went from a bigger bedroom to a smaller bedroom, so I had to kind of condense my my studio. So it's still working pretty good. It's just I'm a little more cramped. You may not be able to tell that you know from just watching this video but anyway it is uh, September 13th it's a Thursday out here in San Jose California it's a little bit overcast today we've been having pretty nice weather out here and uh, you know if you've been watching my tribulation 515 2011 channel you know at this point you know you can't really deny the fact that we're living in the most amazing of times that uh, you know the tribulation the final week the final seven days the final seven years you know because that's how time is measured in the Bible days equals years and you know etc 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 but uh, you know, it's an honor. It's glorious. You know, as a as a follower of Jesus Christ, you know, I wake up every morning just thanking Him for letting me be alive during this period of time, and uh, you know, asking Him to please use me. You know, let me be your vessel for the glory of Your kingdom. Let Your Spirit come to me and through me to the rest of the world. Let me shine my light for Your glory. So that your kingdom can fully manifest itself here on earth. And you know, my friends, that's kind of where we're at. You know, um, we're at a time of manifestation as things kind of escalate, you know, because we have a battle. You know, the uh, kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan. And, uh, you know, what's going to get totally crushed underfoot is the kingdom of Satan. You know, his time is limited, so they're getting really, really desperate. <laughs> and that's why, you know, this doesn't drag on forever, man. You know, there, there's a there's a, a time frame on this. And, uh, you know, those of you that have been uh, following me from the beginning, you know, you know that uh, I planted a stake last year, September 30th, 2011. We had a sign in the, the, the heavens you know, in the constellation of Virgo with Venus coming out of Virgo, uh, Saturn was kind of in there, which was kind of evil. A lot of people thought it was the fulfillment of Revelations chapter 12. You know, after kind of, you know, analyzing it and praying on it and meditating on it, I came to the conclusion it wasn't the fulfillment, but it was perhaps the very start of Revelations. You know, maybe the first verse, uh, uh, Revelations 12 verses 1 and 2, if anything. But I said, oh, you know, <clears throat> what I'm getting is... September 30th, 2011 was the start of the seven-year period. But you know what? The whole timing thing, you know, I don't get hung up on it that much. You know, some people might say it started in 2008 or 2009 or 2010. You know, it's kind of like whatever. Because, you know, once you accept the fact that you're in the end times, you know, whether it started last year or the year before, or if it's starting this year, it really doesn't matter because we're in that final window of time where the old age is going to end and a new age is coming in. And of course, you know, the dark side, uh, Satan's kingdom, they think there's going to be this golden age where they're going to rule, you know, where the pyramid of power is going to stay intact. And those that are already ruling the planet, that have been ruling the planet for thousands of years are going to continue on. Only this time, you know, after they wipe out the vast majority of us, they're going to make things better for those of us that are left behind. They're going to build the golden age, the, the perfect world. Well, I'll tell you, my friends, you know, that's all part of the big deception, the big lie. Because the only perfect world there is, is God's kingdom. You know, God created the world perfect, you know, and it got screwed up. Not by God. You know, by by Satan, by the fallen sons of God, and ultimately by, you know, us humans not following the will of God and either following our own wills or following the will of Satan. And now you look at our world and you know what? It's screwed up beyond repair. You know, 
from uh, modifying things genetically, our food, uh, you know, uh, viruses, bacteria, from using nuclear power, the list just goes on and on and on from fossil fuels that are polluting the planet. You know, in every way, shape, and form, we as humans have been destroying the planet. And we're living a life that is a big phony lie. It's part of that fractal matrix, you know, where we think, you know, people look at the world and they go, isn't it marvelous? But I tell you, you know, God looking down, he's not so happy, you know. Millions of people starving, millions of people dying, millions of people ignoring him, treating him as an afterthought, or not even thinking of God at all. Thinking they can just go about their lives and ha paint their little pictures of what life's supposed to be, you know, the white, the house with the white picket fence, the 401k, and you know what, oh God, he's this little thing way over there, you know, and you know, if anything, I'll go to church for an hour every Sunday and sing a few songs and throw a dollar into the plate. And, uh, you know, I'm square with God. But you know what? That's not how it works. God expects a lot more out of us. You know, he wants us to walk with him every single moment of our lives. And he wants everything that we do on this planet to be pleasing to him. And, you know, we don't really operate that way, you know. Solomon, you know, in his words of wisdom, he said, there's no greater purpose for mankind than at the end of the day to sit back and say, did I please God? Did the things that I do, were they pleasing to God? And you know what? If the answer is yes, at that point, you can celebrate and rejoice in the things that you did that made God happy. But you know what? If the answer is no, and I don't care whether it was actually something cool, you know, like, oh, I made a hundred bucks because if it wasn't pleasing to God, who cares? So that's kind of where we're at, you know, we're an old age, an old world, an old system is dying, an old kingdom, you know, Satan's been on earth for thousands and thousands of years, but his time's getting limited. But uh, those of you that have been watching my channel, you know that, uh, you know, last year I planted a stake based on uh, a sign in the heavens, which was, uh, you know, we had Venus coming out of Virgo, Saturn was in the womb as well, which was kind of, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, slightly evil. A lot of people thought it was the fulfillment of Revelations chapter 12. You know, after praying on it, meditating on it, I came to the conclusion that I did not believe it was the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 12. It might have been the start of it, like maybe verses 1 and 2. But I actually kind of went out on a limb and I said, you know what, the sign we saw in the heavens, that was, that's the start of the, 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 the final week as uh, prophesied in Daniel and, and in Revelations, you know, the final seven days, the final seven years, because time, you know, is, is now in flux as we go from one age to the next. But, you know, even in the Bible, there's, there's human time and then there's God's time, and, and they're not exactly the same, you know, like the Bible says, a day is like a, a thousand years to God, you know, so likewise, the, the final week in the Bible is the final seven years. So uh, anyway, you know, we're here on September 13th. We're almost at the one year anniversary. You know, uh, September 30th, 2012 is only 18 days away. And you know, once again, we have signs in the sky. You know, on September 30th of this year, we have Mercury coming out of Virgo. <clears throat> and I actually believe this might be a further fulfillment of Revelations chapter 12. Because in Revelation chapter 12, it talks about the man-child being born and that the dragon was waiting right there to consume the man-child. So Mercury coming out of Virgo kind of represents the birth of the end time saints, the, the sons of God for the end times. They're going to rule with a, a rod of iron through Jesus Christ. You know, that the rules are going to change. You know, for the last 2,000 years since Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, He's kind of had a hands-off approach where, you know, he, he's left it up to us, you know, humans, whether we want to believe and serve him or serve Satan and, or serve ourselves. And, you know, if you look at the world, it hasn't been going so good because, you know, like I said, most people are either serving themselves or they're serving Satan, but they're not really serving God with all their mind, body, and soul. But you know what? Uh, that's why darkness is spreading around the world. And uh, that's why things are going to change, you know. Even if, if you're living in a, a hedged-in existence, a bubbleized existence where your little world, you know, you've got a job, your bills are paid, your kids are playing softball down at the park. Hey, God bless you, man, that you've been blessed and uh, that your life is going good. But if you would open your eyes and take a step back and see the forest through the trees, you can't help but look at the world. And it's a mess. 
you know, we got huge famine approaching, we got disease and pestilence everywhere, we got global change on a level we've never seen before with the polar caps melting, earthquakes around the globe, volcanoes going off every which way you look, you know, the sun going bonkers, shooting off uh, solar flares. Just the other day on Jupiter there was this huge plasma discharge. They're saying it was a comet hitting Jupiter. I don't think so. I think it's something else that's going on. But my friends, things, I, I told you, things are shifting into high gear and the progression of the end times events is, is happening. And that's what this sign, uh, September 30th, is with Mercury coming out of Virgo. It might be the birth of the man-child. And I don't think it's a literal birth of a baby. You know, some of you may have different opinions and maybe you think it is a birth of a baby. I don't. But, uh, you know, following it, on October 2nd is another big sign because Venus is going to align with Regulus, the brightest star in the constellation of Leo, which, you know, t t I will tell you to a lot of people will tell you that's the star of Bethlehem again, which happened when Jesus was born. So I think it's another signal or sign that, you know, the the end time events are progressing. And and I tell you what's in front of us, my friends, is manifestation, you know, of both evil and good. You know, because evil is going to manifest. Those that aren't following God, they're going to get even more evil. And uh, dark things are going to happen. But those of us that are following God, the kingdom of God is going to manifest itself in a powerful way. And if you're following God, if you're listening to God, you got nothing to fear. Because I tell you, my friends, he's going to take care of us in these dark times. Now, there's a lot of you out there, you know... Uh, where they kind of preach two things, either the rapture, like, hey, we're going to leave Earth and, and not even be around for all this. And then there's some people, I call them the doctrine of the, the beheaded, where they're saying, oh, we're all going to have our heads chopped off. Well, you know what? Some of us may have to sacrifice our lives, and that's an honor to sacrifice your life for a fellow man or for God, you know, if you give it up willingly to... Uh, for, for a higher purpose, you know. But that doesn't mean we're all going to die, you know. So I, I just encourage you to focus on living, you know, praying to God, saying, what can I do for you, Lord, while I am alive? You know, and don't sit back and think you're going to have some magic carpet ride or you might as well do nothing because your head's going to get chopped off anyway. You know, that's kind of a fatalistic or, in my opinion, kind of a, 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 a fantasy, a, a false deception that's been put on us. You know, God is a living God and he expects us to be a living force for the kingdom. So every day you got to wake up and the first thing you should do is pray to God and uh, humble yourself and uh, submit yourself to the will of God and say, how can I serve the kingdom? How can I be a willing servant? How can your spirit come to me and through me to the rest of the world? So anyway, uh, you know, what I wanted to just kind of touch on is one that the star alignment is about to happen. And, you know, we got, of course, other crazy star alignments, you know, of course, the December 21st alignment, which the Mayans prophesied. So, you know, there's just amazing things that are going to happen. But, you know, once again, look at the world, man. It's spiraling, you know, into chaos. I use that phrase all the time over on Tribulation uh, 515, 2011. But, you know, on, on this blog, I'm trying, you know, I don't really go into the details of world events, but man, just look what's happening. You know, in the Middle East, things are erupting. You know, the, 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 the Muslim world, you know, they're going bonkers. They just attacked the embassies in uh, Egypt, in Libya. They killed the ambassador and three other people. They're attacking the uh, embassies in Yemen and in T Tunisia. And I'll just tell you, my friends, you know, the radical Muslim agenda, they are not friends of America. And, uh, you know, Iran, Syria, all that situation is still completely out of control and it's escalating every day. And I'll tell you, I don't think we're going to get to an election. You know, I've been betting against it that that all hell's going to break loose and either we're going to have an economic collapse because that's still rolling forward. You know, we're going towards the abyss abyss off the edge you know so a global economic collapse is still on the horizon but you know what it's just darkness my friends spreading but I don't really want to focus on the dark side because you can just turn on the news and get that and there's plenty of other channels talking about all the the, the evil stuff you know from the Olympic ceremonies being a, a satanic ritual you know everything we see out there and, and you know what that is one thing I'm gonna kind of talk about um, I watched a movie the other day, uh, Snow White and the Huntsman. And uh, you know what? It, it was apocalyptic, man. It was like a message jumping right out of the movie. I don't know if you've watched it, but I think it's 
a statement, you know, on what's happening. You know, it correlates directly to what's going on. But you have Snow White, which is a, a person that was born pure as snow, you know, with a heart of gold, you know. And uh, in the movie, Darkness, the queen, the evil queen, you know, who is uh, existing because she has this spell that was put on her by her mother where uh, she's living to sustain her beauty and her power. But she's dark. Everything she touches turns dark and dies and withers. And uh, in the movie, uh, she uses deception. You know, she creates a false army that the uh, the king, Snow White's father, rides out and they crush the army. But uh, the king, he captures the qu this evil queen and he's attracted to her beauty. You know, kind of the Jezebel effect. And uh, without even thinking or giving it much time, he marries the evil queen like within a day or so. And uh, she only takes about a day and kills him, you know, and takes over his kingdom. And immediately everything across the land, the darkness spreads and just death and evil and winter uh, takes over the land. And uh, that, my friend, is basically what's happening. And uh, there's this scene in the movie it's kind of odd because there, there's like darkness, evil, magic, spells, and yet they, they show Snow White. Uh, she's trapped in a tower and she literally prays to God. She prays uh, the Lord's Prayer. She's saying, Our Father which art in heaven. So even in the movie Snow White, there's Christianity, believers in Jesus Christ. But anyway, in the movie, after the queen throws Snow White up into the tower, she gather, gathers up all the people that were loyal to the king and uh, she has them in her castle and uh, she says are th are these all the remnants and uh, her evil brother says these are the remnants and you know once again you know they're not even coding this stuff because remnants you know that's a term straight out of the bible out of the book of revelations where it talks about the number of believers dwindling you know being called the remnants as darkness takes over the earth and in the movie Snow White, the evil queen says, kill them all by the sword. And right there, you know, they, all the evil people pull out their swords and just stab all the remnants and kill them. But even though they kill all the remnants that are in the castle, there's still more remnants out there. You know, believers. You know, in the movie, they're believers in Snow White. But I'll tell you, my friends, it's believers in Jesus Christ, believers in God. And likewise, you know, as the movie progresses, uh, you find out a couple of things. Uh... For one, there's a sanctuary, and uh, you know, in the sanctuary is a bunch of believers, a bunch of dwarfs, and then there's this other uh, a duke that has a bunch of her has her cousin who's a, a warrior, and uh, you know, that's kind of another aspect, you know, in the movie Snow White that I think ties directly to what's happening is as darkness spreads, you know, Jesus is the good shepherd. And he's going to provide us sanctuary, you know, and it's right there in Revelations as we see this sign unfolding on September 30th with Mercury coming out of Virgo with Saturn sitting right there ready to devour Mercury. You know, in Revelations 12, uh, 12 it talks about uh, eagles, you know, picking up both the woman and the child. The child gets taken directly to heaven and the woman gets taken out into the wilderness to a place of sanctuary where she is nurtured for, uh, I think it's 1260 days, which is three years. And you know, the man-child being took into heaven, you know, I, I don't know what that is, but a couple of the brothers and sisters out there have had messages and visions, and you know, there is a, a distinct possibility there could be something miraculous happening from the 30th to the 2nd, you know, for three days, where there's some kind of transformation or transfiguration or empowerment, you know, I don't know, you know. But uh, that's just subjective uh, analysis on my part. But I do believe, you know, we're living in the most amazing times. I've been witnessing miracles myself every day because my prayer life, you know, I've been praying like never before. You know, I, I walked this planet for a couple of decades where I didn't pray much. You know, I had this philosophy where I thought, hey, God knows what everything I'm thinking. So I didn't think there was a whole lot of need to pray to him. But you know what? Since Jesus came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, Ben, I want you. Welcome back to the, the family. You are a son of God. You know what? My prayer life has multiplied. It has, you know, increased tenfold where I pray all day long and I think about God all day long and I pray for everybody, my brothers, my sisters, those less fortunate, even my enemies. I pray for officials, police officers, uh, the president, you know, foreign governments, you name it, you know. 
And uh, I know there's a lot of other brothers and sisters out there that are on the same brainwave where we are praying like never before. And you know, our, our marching orders to this point have been to shine forth, to love, to show mercy and compassion like never before. And uh, you know, prayer is the number one tool in our toolbox. It is, it is how you manifest the power of God is through prayer. God listens to our prayers and then he makes miracles literally happen in front of our face. So we've all been out there, you know, in the field, you know, uh, praying like never before and giving our testimony uh, to, to, about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died, you know, uh, died for us. And uh, through his sacrifice, we can now be washed and put on robes of righteousness. And, you know, if, if we're prepared, we have on the armor of salvation, the helmet of salvation, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the girdle of truth, the boots of mercy and compassion, the shield of faith, and the sword of the living word. And, you know, my friends, you know, we start with humbling ourselves, but as we start walking with Christ, we can actually walk upright in righteousness with Jesus and help manifest his kingdom right here on earth. So, uh, you know, I think that is basically what's going to be unfolding in a powerful way, you know, as we uh, move past the one year marker and we have this sign in the heavens, uh, you know, happening right in front of us. And, you know, in the movie Snow White, you know, uh, once again, everybody rallies around Snow White. You know, they, they, they say, hey, we will fight for you to the death. And uh, you know what? That's kind of, you know, what our attitude has to be following Jesus Christ, saying, we will fight for you, Lord, to the death. That your kingdom means more to us than our very lives on this planet. You know, like, it, you know, the nine to five jobs, the pile of gold we're all trying to accumulate. None of that means anything. You know, what means something is serving God and loving our fellow brothers and sisters like never before. Because love conquers all. That is what is the truth, my friends. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So anyway, my friends, I want to just, uh, you know, pray for God's blessings to flow out like never before, for the Holy Spirit to be poured out in bucket loads, to fill each and every one of you, your hearts, your minds, and your souls, to enlighten you. You know, to give you wisdom, to give you knowledge, to give you patience, to give you humility, and to give you a, a spirit of servitude, you know, so that you actually, you know, take a minute out of your day. And I say more than a minute. Take an hour. Take a whole day. Take every minute of your day. You know, stop worrying about serving yourself or serving the world. You know, it's not about earning money or uh, stashing away a big pile of gold. No, it's every day saying, how can I show love, compassion, and mercy to my fellow uh, man? You know, feeding the people that are starving in the streets, standing up for those that are less fortunate. You know, the meek shall inherit the earth. That pyramid's going to be flipped on its heads, my friends. You know, that's the change that's coming. So anyway, God bless y'all. I'm going to keep praying for you night and day. I'm going to pray for myself. Please pray for me. You know, things are changing. You know, just the other day logging on to YouTube, it was asking me to put my username on my profile instead of Operation End Times. But those of you that watch my channel, you know, I give out my name every day because I got nothing to hide. You know, I tell people, hey, I'm Ben Ellisted. I live right here in San Jose. But, uh, you know, the world is changing, you know, uh, on the Internet, being anonymous, you know, because just the other day, that group anonymous, you know, they attacked a bunch of websites. And there's people out there, you know, like like you find the haters and the trolls, you know, a lot of people when they when they cause trouble on your channels, you know, you can't see their face. You don't even know who the heck they are, you know, but, uh, you know, those that are in high places, you know, sinister forces even, you know, the rule by secrecy, the Illuminati, they don't lack anonymous either, you know, the having the bottom layer of the pyramid, having people that are empowered because they can get on the internet and keep their identities secret, you know, so that's something that's changing, you know, the, the existing world, the, the kingdom of Satan, they want to control each and every one of us, whether it's through a microchip or a username or an ID number, you know, they want to know who you are, where you are, and what you're doing. You know, and that's where, you know, everybody's going to have that choice, you know, because to follow the path of God is going to be to be bold, to stand forth and stand fast. 
you know, and not not to uh, uh, compromise your beliefs at all, you know. And then whatever the repercussions are, you know, so be it, you know. But God, Jesus is the good shepherd. And uh, you know what? We all have a destiny to follow. And, uh, you know, whether you are asked to sacrifice or you make it to the end, the glorious finish, man, where we all go through the gates into the new age and the new world where Jesus Christ is Lord and King and our tears are wiped away and all disease and hunger and, and injustice is fixed. You know, that's the future we want. Not some phony golden age promised by phonies at the highest levels of power. You know, that's why in my heart, I don't even care about this election, you know, voting for Obama or Romney. You know what? Neither of these guys, you know, are going to fix what's coming our way or what's happening. You know, you know, both of them, in my opinions, you know, God bless them both, you know, but I, I just pray for God to open up their eyes because, you know, I don't quite like what I see, you know. President Obama, I, I'm not judging him, I, but I don't know where his faith lies, you know. He, he grew up in Chicago, you know, following this radical uh, uh, black theology, you know, which kind of twists up the whole way of looking at God and how things unfolded on earth. And Romney is a Mormon. And, you know, God bless Mormons. I'm not hating on them, but, you know, I'm not a Mormon. And I, I don't quite believe in how they view things either. You know, I think they're kind of twisting things up, too. And you know, my friends, that's part of the deception. It's religions all around the world, whether it's the Catholic Church, uh, uh, the Muslim religion. You know, even there are Muslims that believe in God. You know, that's the truth because it's what's in your heart. You know, if love sits on the throne of your heart and the way you view the world is with mercy and compassion and love, well, you know what? That's the true God who's your Lord in your heart. But you know what? If you got anything else going on in there, you know, where things are being twisted up and you're starting to live in an us-they world, you know, not good, my friends. <sighs> well, anyway, Operation End Times, you know, this has been Hellstead, your Jedi warrior for Jesus. Hang in there, you know, the roller coaster ride, this great adventure called the Tribulation, you know, is unfolding right in front of our very eyes. And, you know, once again, you know, to me, it's exciting. It's, it's, there's nothing to fear, nothing at all. You know, when you got God on your side walking right next to you, you know, Jesus is right there. You know, every day I pray, I say, God, let me walk with you, not ahead of you, not behind you, not to the right, not to the left. But, you know, when you got God on your side, you got nothing to fear, nothing at all, nothing to worry about, you know, even as these just crazy events unfold right in front of us, you know, because he's got the master plan, you know, and, uh, we can trust in God. Trust in Him with all your heart, mind, and soul. All right. God bless y'all.